The goal of conservation is the long-term preservation of cultural heritage collections. We've been able to really add to some of the knowledge of art materials. The uniqueness and the powerful qualities of SIRS, it is the ability to take one color body out of a paint film under the microscope and use that technology to really magnify the, the signal coming from it and give a positive chemical identification to the compound. Surface Enhanced Raman Scattering, or SIRS, is a technique where we use incident light, so lasers, and we um, illuminate our molecule with light. Every human has a unique fingerprint, and molecules are the same way. Molecules have unique atoms in unique arrangements that are bonded in certain ways, and that means that that unique arrangement leads to um, specific characteristics. For example, with this molecule, we have four atoms that are connected by bonds. And so when I hit this thing with light, it's going to start to vibrate, right? So kind of oscillate. And it's going to do that in a very unique way, such that if I have a slightly different molecule, maybe one that's just missing one of the atoms, right? This molecule is going to vibrate in a very different way. And so in what Raman provides you is, is a fingerprint, a vibrational fingerprint of this molecule versus the original. The earliest applications of the SIRS technology uh, coincided with an early uh, American painting exhibition, our Painters and Paintings in the Early American South, um, which was a groundbreaking show that really put out on view our earliest paintings from the North American colonies uh, of the South. So our focus really um, included paintings from largely the 18th century. Painters and paintings from this 18th century period in the South, um, they have a great uh, variety of characteristics. So in the 18th century portraits that we look at in collaboration with Shelley Svoboda, the common attribute or the, or the thing that we most often notice is the problem of fugitive pigments, those that are from natural plant or animal sources that are prone to fading with time. And so um, we may observe those in the flesh tones of sitting figures where the red maybe has faded, but with traditional techniques you can't tell one red from another. All you can say is it's red. Um, with the vibrational fingerprinting we're able to say that two molecules that look very similar on paint are very different chemically. So we could say, oh, it's Matter Lake or Carmine Lake. Carmine is a compound that is created by an insect and it was a trade commodity throughout many centuries. The compound was uh, taken from these insects and uh, separated out to create a very um, luminous, transparent red uh, on the cool side. Just knowing that we have these fugitive compounds in our paintings, um, it means that they'll be seen in a, a more sensitive light and um, perhaps uh, exhibition lengths will be adjusted accordingly. We have a question that we are asking to um, justify the small but destructive sampling. There's a pretty strict code of ethics where today it's really not about restoring the painting. You don't want to change the way it looks right now so that um, it's forever in this new altered state. What's actually done now is we do digital reconstructions. And so once we know what the pigments are in the painting, um, we may present the painting as it appears today, and then an original digital reconstruction of the way we think that it appeared based on colorimetric analysis, so that we can show the visitor how fading has played a role and how science plays a role in informing conservation.